All right? Today, we are going to understand the center of Agya. Agya Chakra, which is placed <coughs> on the crossing of the optic chiasma. The nerves that supply the eyes go backwards in the opposite direction. And wherever they cross, this subtle center is situated. It has a continuous connection with the other center through the medulla oblongata. This center has got two petals. And this subtle center <coughs> on one side acts through the eyes and at the back of the head where you have some protrusion. This is the physical side of the center is. Now the people <coughs> who talk of the third eye, this is the third eye. So that we have two eyes with which we see and there's a third eye which is a subtler eye through which we can see. If you see this eye, that means you are away from it. For example, if you can see your eyes, that means you are seeing your reflection, not the reality. If you see anything, that means you are looking at it. So those people who say they see an eye, for example, people who take LSD and all such things, they start seeing an, another eye. They just see this eye and they think their third eye has opened. Actually, you are very much away from the eye. That's why you can see it. You go to <coughs> a supraconscious level on the right side and on the left side to the subconscious level, you can see the eye. But in Sahaja Yoga, you have to see through that eye. Like a window, you can look at the window, but if you see through the window, you can't look at the window. So this illusion that people have that we can see third eye and that's why whoever Kundalini is awake and it's their sadly mistaken. <coughs> this is a very narrow passage through which attention cannot pass normally. <clears throat> is an impossible thing. It's a very narrow passage where the ego and superego fit onto each other and cross each other just like this. And there is no gap in between for the Kundalini to pass. This superego and ego go back, go downward and come to the Vishuddhi Chakra and circle round it and go in the same direction. So you find that they come up to this place, they start from this place, go up to the Agya Chakra and then they cross over. But here they are in the same uh, direction as they were. <coughs> here they cross over. <coughs> so you, when you have a problem, on the left hand side you get the effects that of that on the right hand side but the right hand starts from here up to this side and the left hand starts say from here to here 
but the left hand actually acts <coughs> on the right hand side. So, if you have any problem on the left hand side, so this third eye is to be penetrated through or we have to enter into the third eye <coughs> through Kundalini Avikri. But it is such a closed passage, it is the door to the limbic area which is the kingdom of God. That anybody who tries to push their attention through this closed door either goes to the left or to the right. And this is the beginning of the trouble of the people when they don't understand that whatever is unknown is not God, is not divine. So when they move on the right side, <coughs> they go to the supra-conscious area and they start seeing hallucinations. Actually these are not hallucinations but actual things because they exist on the right hand side. So they start seeing things of the right hand side. They may see colors and <coughs> the formation of colors and they may see also people <coughs> who are dead, who have been very uh, egoistical. Uh, they can see <coughs> Gandharvas and Kinaras because they go to the Gandharvalo, to the right side, <coughs> and start seeing those things in the unknown awareness of supra consciousness. But that movement is very dangerous. Because if anybody catches you there, then you get an added personality sitting on your head and you get possessed by ego and you become on your own <coughs> and you actually become malignant. Hitler is one of the examples of that. He learned this from the Tibetan lamas how to go to the supraconscious. And when he learnt it from them, he used it and made many people supraconscious ego -rated. You must have heard about the Lama system, which was another big problem, was to... <coughs> they knew who is going, the future part, who is going to be the next Lama, where you will find him where you will get him. All the future things they knew and people thought this was divine. To know future is not divine. It's an area which we should never go to because it's an imbalance. We are human beings and we have to know the present and not the future. Once you go through the present stage, then you reach a height from where you can see the past, the present and the future. Supposing on the Mother Earth, if you have a means of going higher and hang yourself there, then you can see whatever has passed through and you can also see what is, is going to come and wherever you are, you are in the present. In the same way, when a person ascends in reality, in, pre in the present, he goes at this point in the super-consciousness from where he says, sees his supraconscious right side and also he can see his subconscious but he has no interest. He wants to rise in the present. <coughs> and this is what actually the Kundalini awakening is. So all those people who say that Kundalini, in the awakening of the Kundalini, it is very difficult and it is harmful, are the people who have no right to awaken the Kundalini. So when they try to play tricks, actually the sympathetic nervous system goes into great agitation. And this sympathetic system on the left and right side 
start extracting more energy from the central path. So much so that it gets exhausted and such a person becomes actually a mental wreck. So many people who said that we are raising your Kundalini by this method or that method, wreck the life of the sadhakas. Ultimately they are left high and dry without achieving anything.